Hi, Steven here from Core Electronics. Today we're going to talk about how to use the infrared transmitter and receiver on the Adafruit Circuit Playground Express, and we're going to program it using CircuitPython. So on the top of your Circuit Playground Express, there's a built-in infrared transmitter and receiver. The transmit's marked with TX, and it's a small diode here, and then the receiver is marked with RX, and it's the black one, and then this little chip down here is our decoder. And we need a decoder because when we send an infrared sing signal, we're not just turning the infrared light on and off, we actually send a series of pulses of on and off, and we measure the time that, t time that passes between each pulse. So each of those is a duration, and it can be anywhere. Uh, the most IR remotes will be under 200 durations, and all this happens in just a fraction of a second. So there's a lot of fun things that you can do with an infrared transmitter and receiver on the Circuit Playground Express. I mean, obviously you can use it as an infrared remote, so you can make your Circuit Playground control your TV, or other devices in your house that receive infrared, maybe a radio. And you can also receive signals from any device. So we can learn the, the pulse of any IR remote and make that control your Circuit Playground Express. So say you have a spare IR remote from an LED strip laying around, you can change all those buttons to have an effect on your code that you're running on your Circuit Playground Express. For this, we're going to make a sketch that turns your Circuit Playground Express into both a transmitter and receiver. So we'll send a unique pulse with each button press and always be waiting for one of those pulses on your Circuit Playground. So I've loaded the same sketch onto two separate Circuit Playground Expresses. When I press the A button on one, will have a sparkle effect. And when I press the B button, it'll it'll make a rainbow effect. And then it would work both ways on each board. So they're both capable of transmitting and receiving at all times. Now, and you can make you can make them do anything really. I've just chosen some simple animations so we can see that it is in fact receiving our signals. And the infrared transmitter and receiver should work pretty accurately up to about three meters. And it will need more or less direct line of sight. There's a lot of error within the pulse detection in, in these signals. So although it is possible to bounce them off hard surfaces and things, it's just not as reliable as direct line of sight. So... If we take a look at our code that that we've made to make this program run, I'll run us through it. First of all, we should we should all be familiar with importing libraries by now. And for this library, we need the Circuit Playground Ex or for this code, we need the Circuit Playground Express library. We need our board library. We need NeoPixels because we're using the onboard NeoPixels. Random, which we use for our sparkle animation. Time to induce some pauses. And our new one here is our pulse IO. And this is the critical one for transmitting pulses and receiving pulses with our infrared. And we also need a ray. So the getting in the meat of the code here, the first our first important part is to initialize our infrared receiver. So I've named it pulse in and we use the pulse in out dot pulse in initializer. And there's three parts to this. And it's first of all, we need to identify where it is the receiver is. And we use board dot IR RX for the circuit playground express. But if you were using an external infrared receiver, then then you'd use this location to say D3 or wherever it was connected. The next part is the max length of 
the durations that the pulse we're looking for. So I know that mine is going to be exactly 59 because I've I'm I've know the pulse that I'm sending, so I set it to the I set it to 59. So then any longer pulses are going to just be ignored right away. They'll, they'll be thrown out. So because it'll hit the maximum and stop. If you're not sure what your pulse lengths are, or you have varying pulse lengths, then I would set this to 100. Basically every infrared transmitter uses under 200 pulses. So if you're really not sure, set it to 200. But be aware on some devices, if you're not using a Circuit Playground Express, this does eat up a lot of memory. And you may run into memory problems if that number is too big. And then our last part is idle state true. And this just confirms that the normal state for an infrared receiver is logic high. And this just confirms that that's the condition that we're starting out in. Then we clear any artifacts within our pulse in and then resume our detection. The next part, we're going to initialize our pulse out. So our transmitter for first of all, we need the pulse width modulation out and we need the pulse out command. So first of all, we set up our PWM. And again, we say where our transmitter it is. For this, we need to set our frequency and infrared. This is really important infrared signals are always going to be 38 kilohertz. So we've set that frequency to 38 kilohertz and duty cycle is just the time off time on versus time off and we've set this to 50% which which will work for most devices and then we confirm our pulse out using the variable pulse so moving on we have our first pulse array here and as you can see, it's a lot of, these are actually the time that passes between each pulse. So these are the duration times. And there's 59 of them in this particular one, but you could set them to any length you want. And it's good to start and end um, each pulse with a pretty long duration gap. So, so you're, um, receiver has maybe has a little extra time to realize it's receiving a pulse and it can make it a little cleaner so you don't have overlapping pulse durations um something important to mention about our pulses is we need to in order for them to send and receive properly through ir we need to make we can't use regular arrays we need to make them an array dot array um data type H, which is for unsigned half word. And we do this because this ensures that the entire array will be sent whenever we command it to be sent. And then the signal will stop when it's completed. So that way we don't start sending part of the array, our code continues and it gets cut off. So this makes sure that Whenever it's sent, it's sent in a whole single unit. Our next part of the code is our comparison. And this compares our received pulses against our stored pulses. And so that's what determines if, say, we've received a pulse. That's what, that's what determines if the pulse we receive matches our stored pulses. Um, an important thing to point out with this is that it's a fuzzy compare. There's a lot of error, like I said earlier, within infrared. So we can't be looking for a perfect match every time. We need to have a percentage margin of error that's acceptable to still be a match. So the fuzziness is the margin percent of error set up in this code. And I've set it to 0.5, which is 50%. Since I'm only looking for two commands or two different um, pulses, 50% is still a very acceptable margin of error 
between the two and there's no there's no false positives between buttons still if you had a lot of if you were looking for a lot of different commands or a lot of different um, pulse inputs then you might need to set that down to about 20 percent but for this sketch it's it works just fine at 50 and and it's a little bit nicer user experience because it's much more likely to read as a match than than not. If you set the fuzziness too low, then you might might find that you're pressing your button on your remote four or five times before it realizes it realizes that it's a match. We then initialize our NeoPixels and we set up our animations for sparkles and rainbow cycles and I won't get into that too much here. There's a lot of documentation available for NeoPixels. Um, in our main loop, we have first our button press, um, button press logic. So when we press a button, because when we press a button, it sends the signal out because the transmitter and receiver are so close together. We need to be sure that before we transmit it, we turn our receiver off. So it doesn't just read the transmitted pulse that's coming out right next to it as a unique pulse. So first of all, we pause our infrared detection. We send our pulse. We pause for a second. So our if we if the button's held down, it doesn't run the run the pulses together, which might be read as one long pulse instead of unique uh, multiple pulses. Um, then we clear any artifacts that might have been read halfway if by some chance the device was halfway through reading a pulse when you push the button this would clear any artifacts and then we resume our reading our detection of new pulses once that's over um, for as far as receiving pulses it's our this is our next part of code we have our while length pulse in is greater than or equal to 59 and 59 is the max so this will only really read when it's at 59 which is the length we want we'll pause our detection and then we'll convert our input we'll convert our detected our detected pulse into the variable detected as a array dot array with the with the data type h and it will be the pulse in data in an array, the length of the pulses detected. And then we'll compare that against our stored pulses. And if the if it's if it's a match, we'll print that we received a, a good button press and then play the relevant animation for two seconds. And then we'll clear clear our pulses and we'll resume. So it's important to clear and resume because whenever you receive you receive a an IR pulse, it stores it in the pulse in until it's cleared. So if you don't clear it, it's just going to it's just going to stay at that reading that it had the first time and it won't overwrite. So let's see it in action with our serial monitor we have our IR activated print and then when we we hit it with a, an IR signal we see that it's received a correct button A correct button B press now if you want to use a different a different remote in order to control this same sketch you can do that you just need to you just need to record the signal that it's sending out first and then plug that into your code. So I'll show you how to do that now. So let's go into a new document. We'll open the REPL. And this is kind of a live coding um, tool. So we can enter in our code as we go and it will execute right on the board so when we have the REPL open we're not we're not actually using the computer at all 
what we're we're running directly off of the board right now and we just have our display on the computer. So first we need to import the libraries that we'll use. So we'll we'll import the board, import pulse IO, import array. And then we need to initialize our infrared reader. So I've I'm just going to copy and paste this in to save time, but it's all available on the tutorial page for you to see. So we do IR read equals the pulse in. We identify the board location, the max length, and I've set it to 100 because maybe we don't know how long the pulse durations are going to be. Idle state true, and we'll hit enter, and then we'll we'll enter uh, length. Oops. Let's start that over. We'll enter length IR read. So length IR read is zero. So we've received no pulse durations. So now we take our infrared remote. For this, I'll just use our already set up transmitting Circuit Playground Express. I'll hit the button once. So it's received a button press from my infrared remote. We'll do the IR read again. And now you see that we've got 59 pulses detected. So now we want to pause our detection because if we have any if we have any stray infrared in the room or something, it might throw off our results or if there's another button pressed, then it'll throw off our results. So we'll pause that while we do our next step, which is to convert our detected pulses into an array. And again, I'll just copy that, but it's available on toward the bottom of the of the tutorial page. So we have we've st storing it as on command equals array dot array and it's going to be data type H and we'll say it's IR read for X in range, which is the length IR read, which would be 59. And then we can just type in on command to see the array that we just stored. And here, here it is our array. So that's our pulse durations for the IR remote that we just pointed at it. So now we can just copy this and now we can just copy this, paste it straight into our code and save it as a pulse option if you want. And that allows you to use any infrared remote to, to control your circuit playground and or just save the, the pulse code that it's outputting. So rather than maybe trying to look up somewhere in a data sheet what the actual pulse info is. You can just read it and stick it straight into your code and away you go. So that wraps up our tutorial on using the infrared transmitter and receiver for the Adafruit Circuit Playground Express. If you want to learn more, head over to our tutorials page. All the code and some some step-by-step -step info on how to read infrared pulses is available there. And if you're interested in learning how to do the same project in MakeCode, check out our other videos. I've got a tutorial that I've just put up on how to do the same thing in MakeCode, and it has great results. So see you there.